to ride off when you're ready. Hi guys, welcome back to Clear View Driving. My name is Ammon and today I'm doing a mock test with Gavin. Yep. And now this is the first time we are driving together and your test is next week. Yep. How are you feeling? Nervous. Now you've never done a mock test before, have you? No. Now he's done around 14 hours of driving lessons yep. in a manual car and around two hours of practice outside of your lessons, but in an automatic, right? So not a lot of practice, but um, yeah, we did a little bit of a drive on the way here. But um, yeah. Okay, so do you know what's involved in a mock test? Do you want me to tell you how it's going to go? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get you to follow the sat map for the first 15, 20 minutes or so, and then I'm going to give you normal instructions thereafter. We're going to do one manoeuvre and we may also carry out the emergency stop. Throughout the drive, follow the road ahead if I'm not saying anything, okay? All right, so before we get started, I'm going to ask you a question about your vehicle. Could you tell me how would you check that your head restraint is correctly adjusted? I know they don't move in this car, but how would you generally check? So I'll straight and then move your head back, okay. shake your face, and next to your head. Okay, that sounds fine. All right, so I'm ready whenever you're ready. For anyone that's new to the channel, don't forget to like the video, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. And this is Lovejit's friend. As you can see, he is as quiet as Lovejit. So yeah, let's see how this goes. Hi guys, welcome back to another mock test. Sorry about the technical glitch at the beginning of this video. The rest of the video is as normal as you'd expect. Now, Gogan hasn't actually made any minor mistakes by this point, and he's simply following the sat-nav, and the sat-nav's telling him to go straight ahead. He was super nervous, but he is doing well. So continue watching to see how he gets on. After two Now we're approaching this roundabout to follow the road ahead, which is the second exit. Guggen is in the left-hand lane, and that's the ideal lane to do the roundabout in. As we get a bit closer, he switches into the right-hand lane, which does make it harder to exit. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit, A310. As we exit the roundabout, there is only one lane to take that exit, which would be the left lane. So we're going to have to switch lanes in the roundabout to get towards our exit. The roundabout is fairly busy and we are crossing two lanes on this dual carriageway. Guggen waits for a safe gap but as he enters, he enters too slowly. You need to make sure you accelerate quite firm and delay the gear change as this will help you speed up. room park up on the left anywhere safe. Thank you. Drive up whenever you're ready. Whenever you're driving and you're asked to pull over and park, the examiner would have usually identified a space for you to be able to park up. If there's any traffic around you or any junctions around, be sure to signal that you're parking and signal that you're moving off. After 200 yards, turn right, B361. 
This junction is on a bend, so we have to move round towards the left to make the right turn. Guggen does go into the middle, but his front right side of the car is a bit too close to the centre line. If a large vehicle had turned up going around that bend, they would have been too close to our vehicle and possibly collided. So you want to be mindful of how traffic on the opposite side of the road would be flowing. As we're waiting in this position, the tyres are currently facing towards the right. So if any vehicle passes us quite close or if we lurch forward, we're going to go into the right hand side of the road. We should wait more towards the left so that we're in the centre of this space. As we're waiting in this position, we would either go when the road ahead is visibly clear and we have a gap, or when the traffic light in front of us, which is currently green, starts changing to red. Now the traffic light did start changing, but the traffic from the left was still coming through, although it was red. So Gogan had to keep waiting until the traffic in front clears, but be sure to clear the junction quickly. Sometimes, stalling the engine may actually be a blessing in disguise, and that's exactly what happened here. Guggen was waiting for a safe gap to enter and thinks it's safe and tries to emerge and stall straight away. Had he taken that gap, it would have gone down as a serious, if not a dangerous fault, as there was a vehicle approaching slightly further, but at speed. So always make sure you can see the road right the way down and wait for a safe gap. Gergen's driving really confidently along this carriageway, but at this point the sat-nav hasn't given any instructions with what we're doing next, but you can see with the diagram that we are going to be making a right turn on the roundabout, so Gergen notices this in good time and switches into the right-hand lane. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, B358, towards Whitton. As we enter this roundabout, Guggen does do the turn really nicely, but he's not indicating, so the vehicle behind us doesn't realise we're making a right turn. As we're already in the left-hand lane, it is clear that we're heading towards the exit, but you should put on a left indicator as the signal may be helpful for pedestrians and other vehicles. Towards you. 
As we get to the end of this road, the left hand side of the road is fairly open and we can see it quite well, whereas the right hand side you can't see until quite late. Gurgan looks really well towards the left but doesn't pay much attention towards the right. Always make sure you look right, left, right and pay more attention towards the right. If a vehicle is approaching, they'll come towards you from the right hand side first. His looking towards the right was prompted by me looking At the point that Gagan does look right, if a vehicle had been approaching, we would have been approaching the junction too fast, causing them to slow down and swerve, or even just braking really harsh to make that stop. You want to make sure you've got a clear view, if not, then you should be approaching slower. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. On approach to any zebra crossing, always step off the accelerator and scan both sides, as this is where pedestrians have priority. On approach to the next crossing, Gurgan does notice the pedestrian a bit late, but manages to stop just in time. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. In the distance, Guggen gets marked down for clearance as the space is fairly narrow and a vehicle from the right-hand side was passing fairly close, so he should have slowed down some more or even considered stopping. After 200 yards, you have reached your destination on your left. Okay, I'm going to give you instructions as normal from now on, just keep following the road ahead. And let's round about turn right there. As Gagan approaches these roundabouts and junctions, he should approach a little bit slower because as we're going through, it happened to be clear, but if a vehicle had been approaching, he would have had to harsh brake and stop. Okay, Gugan, if you can pull over and park on the right-hand side of the road, don't worry about the driveways on this occasion. Okay, so we're now going to do the reverse on the right exercise. So I'd like you to reverse back for about two car lengths keeping a reasonable distance with the pavement as you do this and try not to touch the pavement. Okay. Hey. You have to lift it. Continue reversing. I'll be fine now. Thank you. Drive off whenever you're ready.
And if you could pull over and park up on the left anywhere safe. Not too close yet. Thank you. Travel when you're ready. Take the next road on your left, please. If you could just pull it and park on the left, just behind the black car, don't worry about the driveway, it's just kind of in this space. That'd be great there, thank you. Just leave enough space to move away. Okay, Gogan, what we're going to do now is shortly I'm going to get you to carry out the emergency stop. As you're driving down this road, I'm going to make sure it's nice and safe. You're going to see me looking around like this. And I'm going to give you this signal. Stop. As soon as you get that signal, I'd like you to stop the car as quickly and as safely as possible. Okay? But wait for my signal before you stop the car. Drive up whenever you're ready. Thank you. I'm not going to ask you to do that again. Drive off when you're ready. At the end, Tamara. Coming up to this meeting situation with this large vehicle on the opposite side of the road, Guggen gets a dangerous mistake with clearance as I had to take control. There's a parked car on the right hand side of the road so the lorry moved closer to us and the lorry was very fast. As soon as the lorry was approaching, we should have been slowing down and because the lorry was so fast, we should have considered stopping. That's fine, thank you. Secure the car. And switch off the engine. Thank you. Can you just give me a few minutes? Hey, Thielen. Um. How was your test? I did a few mistakes and then look and I had to stop, the emergency stop. Yeah, what about it? 
Didn't look all the way. Didn't look around? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> you remember I reminded you that earlier? Yeah. Okay, so for a first mock test, there's not a lot of serious faults, but there are quite a lot of minors, so we need to cut down on those, definitely. Um, so unfortunately, no, it wouldn't be a pass. Now, the main reason why it wouldn't be a pass is there's a few, which I'm going to highlight for you. So firstly, the emergency stop. After you've stopped in the middle of the road, I've said to you, thank you, drive off and you've simply... Yeah. Yeah? So I looked. Yeah, definitely. You need to look around. Okay, we're in the middle of the road. You need to check your blind spots like this. And once you've stopped after an emergency, stop to secure the car as well. So you're not in a rush to get away. The next thing was the way we approached that roundabout back there. You know where we did that right turn? There was like a grey Passat. Yeah. There's a car from your right. You waited for him, but only just. And then the turn on the roundabout was quite fast, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. Got to slow down. Yeah, so we approached that a bit too fast. Now with that lorry just now, why did I grab the wheel? I was too close. Yeah. He was very fast, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay, did you notice how fast and how close he was coming to you? Now, as we're driving along, there isn't much we can do, but because he's coming in at that speed, close to you, you needed to at least slow down and move left. You're carrying on, on as normal, and I've had to grab the wheel there, because he would have honestly hit that wing mirror if I didn't take control. Okay? So even if it's someone else's fault, we need to yeah. be a bit more defensive. How was the rest of the drive? How were the, how were the roundabouts in the first half? Um, first half, I was finding it, like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I got, like, the part, uh, the emergency stop part, that's mm. when I started doing more mistakes. Oh yeah, after that we definitely had more, definitely. Okay, so in the first half, I felt like we got away with a lot of the minor faults because there wasn't a lot of traffic around us. Like you were being safe, you're checking your mirrors and sorts, but I felt like if we had a bit more going on or the traffic around us was a bit faster, we could have had a few faults on the first half as well. So there's a few I want to talk about. So firstly, you know that roundabout where we were going straight? You went into the right-hand lane to go straight, didn't you? Yeah. Do we need to be on the right? No. <laughs> we should have been on the left, didn't we? So you have started on the right, and you, you did check your mirrors, you've signalled and everything. But like I said, if there was traffic on your left, you would have now been panicking, going, oh, where, where am I going? Yeah. Yeah? And also the gap that you took, like, it's a pretty small gap. But I feel like you need to start moving into these roundabouts with a bit more speed because that's a gap you can take but you've got to be quick with it so you'd normally see like experienced drivers going in for that sort of gap yeah so you've got to be quick if you're going to go otherwise don't go okay um you remember that other roundabout where we were making like a left turn as we we're about to go on the carriageway with the stadiums in front of us yeah now you stalled there didn't you yeah okay you know if that stall there was honestly a blessing in disguise for you had you taken that gap, that would have been a serious fault because there was traffic coming in from the right on a forty road. So even though it looked clear, but as soon as you go in, there's traffic that's slightly further but coming in at forty, like possibly. Yeah. So that wasn't an ideal gap. So I would honestly make sure that the road is completely clear or the traffic is stopping before I take that gap there, because of the speed that they can come in. Okay. Um. Then we did a few stops and a few right turns on the roundabouts with the traffic light at least where well, there were no signals you weren't making use of your indicator as much as you probably uh, did you realize you pulled up a, pulled up twice with no signal no nah, i don't really. <laughs> you did that right turn on the roundabout with no signal but because it was traffic light controlled it wasn't major but it definitely confused the guy behind because he didn't know what we're doing yeah you did the roundabout itself nicely but you need to tell everyone where you're going okay um, yeah, I just felt like we were a bit lucky in the first half. Like that zebra crossing man, you stopped a bit late for him, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you saw him, but it was just like, oh, come on, get there. There was one really bad clearance right near that tight bendy bit near the high street. There was like a, a trucker on the right and you kind of dealt with it, but you should have at least slowed down to make it easier. If somebody squeezes into you, if you're already in a tight gap, how do we deal with it? Slow down, stop. Yeah, definitely slow down because then it'll give you more time to sort of judge the space and then stop if necessary, okay? But yeah, I definitely felt like in the second half there were more mistakes going on. I felt like the junctions were a little quick at parts. Yeah. Yeah, but it's okay. You've got enough time. You can still work on these things. So we're going to go and work on some of these things now. How do you yeah. feel about your mock test experience? It was like scary. 
doing everything independently. Yeah. Oh, there was that right turn as well. Do you remember that right turn near um, Twickenham Stadi Station? Yeah. Where we're on like a bit of a slant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? We're car waiting there. Like yeah, the car was rolling a little bit, but when you're waiting there, your front right corner, like that corner there, it felt like it was exposed to the traffic passing because they're, they're coming around a bend, aren't they? I was just hoping that no buses turned from the left because if a bus had come along, that, that bit would be hit. So you need to be wary of that. I'll, I'll show you where that was because that was a bit... Um, like you're still in your space, but you're just closer to the right, which means they're likely to scrape past your car because of the bend. Yeah. Do you know which bit I'm on about? Yeah, yeah the one next to your Tesco. Yes, that's the one, the one near the college. All right, well, that's the end of your mock test today. Thank you for everyone that has been watching. Hopefully this mock test has been useful for you guys as well. But you've still got some time and let us know how the test goes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a quiet one.